Hey guys, it's Perry here and I'm back with a brand new Collider Videos interview. We are bringing some horror to you right now because we have an interview for the new movie Rings that's coming out. We have Bonnie Morgan and Matilda Lutz in the studio. Hello. Thank you both so much hey, for Perry. being here. I'm a big fan of this franchise, so I imagine it must have been exciting for you guys to get to join in. I got to start broad. What was your first experience with the movie The Ring? Because I feel like everyone out there, whether they're a big horror fan or not, for some reason, The Ring in particular, everyone has this story where, oh, I was freaked out when I saw The Ring the first time. By all means. Uh, yes, I definitely was. I think I was covering my eyes the whole time. <laughs> and then the second time I watched it, uh, it was after my first audition for the movie. And uh, I was in LA, uh, bright daylight, 2 p.m., and I just couldn't do it. So I called my brother and asked him to come <laughs> and watch it with me. Like most of the rest of the planet, I was mm -hmm. terrified by The Ring. The original one was, it was groundbreaking. I mean, as a horror fan, it really ushered in a new genre of horror, which was the PG-13 Creep Fest, which is why so many of us got to see it mm. and be extra terrified. Now, after the initial screening, which was haunting, I mean, really, I brushed my teeth kind of looking over my shoulder for probably longer than I should have, but I'd worked with Rick Baker a lot of times before then, so once I found out that Rick had designed all the makeup and the creatures and the, you know, all the death for that one. I called up the shop and I got to come and see a bunch of huh. it, which was, which was really fun. And a very dear friend of mine, a woman named Svetla Krastova, when I watched the end credits, was the stunt double for Duvet Chase. So I called her up, I was like, how was it? You can't name drop Rick Baker and then not have me ask what you worked on him with. Uh, what you worked on him <laughs> with. That's not English. What you two worked on together. <laughs> I've worked for Rick a bunch, thank God. Uh, the first one was How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I was a who <laughs> down in Whoville. And I could totally see that how that would work. I know. It <laughs> makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Going from Whoville to the well. Well, well, well. And uh, a friend of mine, a man named Mark Satrekian, who is... Uh, kind of the godfather of battle bots. He's made so mm. many incredible uh, servos, maquettes, and all the animatronics for Rick. He called me up and he said, I want you to know you are now a unit of measure over at Cinovation. I said, what does that mean? He said, well, Rick said, uh, we need a small box. And I said, well, how small a box do we need? He said, well, not Bonnie Morgan small, but um, small. I was like, I've made it. I totally made it. I feel like that belongs on a business card somewhere. <laughs> and I did Men in Black too. I was a couple of aliens on that and the second ring movie, of course, and a few others. Stuff. I, Sol I get, solid lineup right there. I get to play monster for Rick. <laughs> And now can you tell me a little bit about your casting process here? Because I love hearing about horror movie auditions in particular, just because mm -hmm. I imagine them bringing you into a room and asking you to do various scenes. And I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like to have to pull off one particular scene from this movie without the context of the rest of it. So I, I'm Italian. So I was in Italy when I got the audition. So the first audition was a self-tape. And uh, it was a goodbye scene between Julie and Holt. And then the second scene I did was in uh, LA. And uh, it was quite a few, not just like the second one. But I had two scenes. And then they asked me to do stills of me screaming. But I was on a trip by myself. So I asked like a random stranger <laughs> to take pictures of me. And it was, I probably think that. He probably thought that I was crazy or That's something. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. As long as it gets the so, job done, though. Yeah. Yeah. But it was fun. And then um, I actually didn't have a scene in the audition where I was screaming or doing like any like something crazy. And I remember being on set, and the first scene where I had to scream, the producer came and said, oh, thank God you can scream because mm. we weren't sure. <laughs> so It's a weird thing, but I imagine, you know, not everybody's natural scream probably sounds the way it should in an actual movie. Some yeah. of us scream like little girls. 
or something just completely unpleasant that nobody wants to hear. Not the case in this movie, though. I want to ask about some of the movie magic here and particularly about a scene that's featured in the trailer. It's the hair scene because it kills me. It killed me in, in the first movie. It killed me here. Something about that just creeps me out. What actually goes on behind the scenes to pull something like that off? Am I going to say it? Because then it's going to ruin everything. <laughs> no, so it was it was very technical to shoot the scene, but for me it was so much fun. And I think it was one of the most fun scenes to shoot. And I remember the camera operator turning the head because he couldn't <laughs> he couldn't look at it. Oh, you look like you were going to throw yeah. up. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, it's it's pretty, should I just say it? Sure. Okay. Yeah, go it's, for it. It's like braces, basically. Huh. Um, and uh, there's like a little wheel with hair inside, and you have a hook towards the throat, and you just start pulling it out. I thought it was your real explanation hair. was going to make me feel better about it. <laughs> I, that was not no. the case at all. No. No. Oh, wow. That's yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah. and insanely unpleasant sounding. Yeah. Um, Bonnie, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your family's history in the industry because that was a big surprise to me because I was reading the press notes and you, you come from, from a line of uh, filmmakers. Yes. Uh, thank you. Well, let's see. Going way back, I am a third generation performer and circus performer. My grandma Dottie opened for Frank Sinatra in 1942 on his uh, Bobby Sox tour. She did 27 flip flops down a racetrack. They settled in Passaic, New Jersey, where she opened a dancing school, the Locker School of Dance, which is still there, and had my dad, Gary, who is, uh, oh gosh, he was a Broadway star. He did A Gift of Time with Olivia de Havilland. He did all of these incredible shows. And he was also the original Little Richie in the Dick Van Dyke pilot when it was still the Carl Reiner show. And he went on to kind of be Disney royalty. He was one of the Gogans in Pete's Dragon. He's currently the last living Gogan. And he was the physical reference for Torin in the, the Black Cauldron and all of these fabulous things. But what he's kind of known for is he, was, he doubled the dog in Cujo. That really excites me. Yeah, I mean, my, that's really the whole reason. My father's I great horror lineage is that he doubled the dog in Cujo, literally <laughs> doing all of the attack scenes with, with Danny and with Dee Wallace. Anytime you see the dog attacking the actor, it's my father in a dog suit. That's Stra pretty much the coolest thing. Strangely I've ever enough, heard. he was also in Army of Darkness. You know the little ash Ooh. they pick up by his ankles Ooh, and drop yes. in Ash's mouth? Oh, you're speaking my language right my now. My father, ladies and gentlemen, Gary Morgan. <laughs> that's, that's so damn cool. I love that. And furthermore, if it please the court, my Aunt Robbie was Jason's first victim in Friday the 13th. Little Annie, the one that gets in the Jeep. Hi, mm. can you take me to Camp Crystal Lake? She's the one that gets her throat slit in the forest. Those are and the best claims to fame <laughs> I've heard. This is my family. And now, this is, now this you, is what we do. You get your Samara. So you, you have a pretty iconic horror villain <laughs> on I, your list, too. We're, we're of a great horror lineage. I'm, I'm just working to do my part in that. So one of my favorite things about horror movies in general are ones that make me wonder, what would I do in this situation? And The Ring in particular is a franchise that always makes me think that because mm. to be completely honest, if someone came up to me and said, oh, I heard about a videotape that kills you, you want to watch it? I, it out, outside of the realm where these movies exist, I would say yes. Would you do the same? Oh, no. <laughs> I've been doing this for far too long. Usually... Here, look in this box. Hmm? Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. <laughs> you could look at it that way, but um, why take the risk? I Are you wouldn't. in the same? No. No? <laughs> All right, so I'm clearly the only one who dies in seven days. That's okay, though. That's, that's okay. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> That you will, and it will be exciting, and the makeup will look cool, and everything about it will be... It'll be so good. Yeah, this is super creepy. All right, before we have to wrap up right now, I wanted to play a quick game with you guys. It's a movie version of the game Would You Rather. So all filmmaking questions, I will ask you the question, and both of you just pick one or the other. All right, so we're going to start with, 
Would I you rather? Ah, uh, I'm not. <laughs> it's picking between two things. So, okay. like, like a traditional one that is not about filmmaking is: Would you rather be blind or deaf? That's actually okay. really morbid. I'm surprised that I went there, but then again, <laughs> gosh, we're talking gosh, about the rain. Got dark past. <laughs> but look who's. Talking. This is all about making movies, though. So, okay. so here's a good first one to start with: Would you rather screw up every take yourself, or have someone else screw up your best take? <laughs> someone else <laughs> <laughs> that's a loaded one i feel that's like a it's loaded especially one. I, can, I can take responsibility for mine but if someone else blows my best take i uh so probably for the safety of others i would say i'll take the hit myself <laughs> given the fact that i imagine all of your scenes also involve <laughs> massive resets or props or action or something oh, like that it must be tough team making yeah. things happen i mean i have I have a lot of my best stuff taken away because my Hudson sprayer wouldn't like, you know, shoot things out of the right place at the right time. So given that, <laughs> I'll, I have plenty of experience with that. All right, next one. Would you rather have to fake sneeze or fake vomit on screen? Oh, vomit. Vomit. I'm, I'm a I've good, done it. <laughs> fake sneezing is tough. I, I can't imagine pulling off a convincing fake sneeze. <laughs> Wow! Hey, hey! <laughs> Sound effects too. I like it. We provide. Would, would you rather do motion capture or wear a ton of prosthetics? <sighs> prosthetics. Oh, I've done both. Um, strangely enough, you work harder on mocap because there is no downtime. You're the only thing they're shooting, and mm -hmm. I, I love the makeup teams. I've worked with a lot of them. I'll take the prosthetics. Oh, that's an interesting point of view. I, I never really thought about being actually the center of attention the entire time you're doing mo motion capture. That makes sense. Well, every now and again, you have uh, a bigger personality than you and your makeup artist, which is fun, too. Would you rather work on a set with no food or no caffeine? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's actually worse. That's actually worse than me asking you if you'd rather be blind or deaf. Depends what food. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd have to take no food because I usually can't eat. And it's, it's painful. Oh it my is so painful God. when there's crab legs and beautiful spreads. And it's like, I love it. You can't eat because of what you have to do in the movies? No, because of the prosthetics. <gasps> oh, I can't get, I forgot any, I about can't get that. a lot through the wow. makeup. Hmm. Most, I'm mostly on a liquid diet or some... I make an ass of myself when I eat. I have been, a few times I've just turned around, they're like, oh, Bonnie, don't do that. So, no food. Wow, I love how I can watch terrible things happen to people on screen, <laughs> but the more mortifying thing right now is you having to be on a liquid diet while you make a movie. I made a funnel out of a cup once to try to eat chicken. <laughs> it went poorly. Yeah. I chose poorly. Smoothies, I think that's the way to go. Smoothies. All right, guys, that's all the time we have today. Matilda Bonney, thank you guys thank so you. much for being here. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you thank for you. having us. And you guys, Rings comes out this weekend, so that's Friday, February 3rd. Go check it out. Also, Collider Nightmares every Wednesday morning right here on the Collider Videos YouTube channel. See you soon. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.